Bringing you the latest news from Coronado Athletics. This is the Mustang Fan Zone Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Happy Monday. Welcome into the high school fan zone on 100.7 The Score. I am Randy Rosetta. We are going to jump right in with the Mustang Fan Zone because I am joined. If you're watching on TV, you see him to my far left, Andrew Roy. And what year are you, Dayton? Uh, 2025. Oh, 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 there you go. 2025. Well, you got to have, help me here. I'm used to talking juniors and seniors. Yeah. Senior, yes, You're sir. You're a senior. Okay, I should know that because my daughter's a junior, <laughs> and I've got to get in my head that she's 2026. 20, <laughs> Welcome, Dayton Cheek. Nice to meet it's you. It's nice good to, to meet you. Here. It's uh, Andrew, I mentioned this when you walked in. I'm going to guess that you were in a pretty good mood all weekend. I was. I was happy, you know, but it was – you know, quick, and we got rid of it, and mm-hmm. on to the next. Because you got a short week. And the it, reason Andrew's short. in a good mood, and I assume Dayton's in a good mood, is because Coronado got they in, got off the schneid. They got a key district win against Caprock, and not only got the win. I said this to uh, can't remember who I was talking to. I think it was Saturday morning on the uh, Saturday morning quarterback show with Mark Finkner. I think it was important that you guys got the win in the way you did it. Yeah. Now, Coach. May not like he. You may have given him a free, few more gray hairs, <laughs> taking a little bit, of, taking a, a day or two off of his time here on Earth. <laughs> but the fact that you guys had to kind of dig out of that hole that that's build something within your team when that happens. You guys got down twenty two to nothing in a blink. It wasn't yeah. even. I mean, it was quick. It was fast. But you fought back. We did. A couple of things happened. I'm going to get you to talk about them. I just mentioned this. I was putting together the, the helmet stickers for this week when I was doing stats. I thought the touchdown right before halftime was massive for you guys. That, that was the one to Dom Parrish, correct? That, that was key. That was real key for us going into half. Um, you know, right before that, we got the penalty call that was, you know, and I don't want to harp on it. I've been harping on it for a while. but. Uh, it, it it was one of the worst calls I've ever seen, and <clears throat> you know it kind of gave them, and I, it was one of those calls that could, you know, it could decide a game. You know, they're up twenty two to seven at that point, um, and they give them that call, and they go in to score, and we come back, and and Dom answers. You know, we we make them kick it off. I think four times. Right. Yes. <laughs> I was I was ticked off, so I was kind of let. Let them keep, let them keep kicking it, and uh, we finally got the ball where we wanted it. Uh, we went down and scored right before half, and that was a really big deal going into halftime and 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 making sure we got to where we needed to be. So my old man ADD, I've got, to, I've usually got to be listening to a game while I'm watching one I'm covering. Yeah. So I was actually listening to you guys and listening to Kirk Kaiser talk about four kickoffs in a row, and yeah. It's just it's a little thing, yeah. But that wears them out a little bit. Not just in that situation, but they go into halftime with their tongues kind of wagging. Plus, you guys got the touchdown. That that maybe was a little bit of a mental hurdle for you guys to kind of put in front of them going into halftime. Absolutely. If we don't get that touchdown before half, uh, I don't know what I'm saying to my guys going into half. But we get it, and uh, it's a totally different ball game. And, and kudos to our guys for coming out and fighting for that touchdown right there going in the half. Well, and then the second half was all Coronado. That's and it. the other key that, that that touchdown was key, but the the fact that you guys shut them out in the second half cuz you guys defense have your defense has struggled at times. That's I mean yeah. we're not we're not hiding that from anybody. No. To have that shutout especially in that game and coming into this week against a pretty good offensive team in Amarillo High. That's a that's a building block. We're going to talk about offense. I promise, David. <laughs> but, but Andrew, the, what did your defense do so much better the second half against them? Well, I thought we just made adjustments at halftime and understanding what was going on. Uh, you know, they came out. Amarillo Caprock came out. They, their back was against the wall. They needed to win, too. Uh, they're in the same boat as we are. Um, and they did some things that we haven't seen. You know, they're leaving our nose unguarded and they're running kind of some midline stuff. And so that was different. So we went back to the drawing board. We drew it up and we, we got it fixed. And, man, kudos to our, our staff, uh, our defensive staff at halftime for f- making those adjustments and coming out and uh, dominating the second half. 
we got to talk offense. I promise yeah. Stephen here, and and especially because he had a big night. I, again, I was working on the helmet. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving it away here. You're going to be on the helmet stickers this week. Yes, sir. Thank you. You had five catches for a hundred yards. Yes, it's hard sir. to avoid that. You guys, Dayton. You mentioned this a few weeks ago. He adds another little wrinkle to your offense. You guys have weapons over there, but ha- having Dayton come back has given you a little bit more spice. Absolutely, man. He, uh, you know, we put him on some shallow routes, and you know, he made a couple mistakes, maybe one or two in the first half, and he took some coaching. Man, that second half, he really helped our our offense go and get in the end zone, and it was all because of him. You know, making the plays that he made, and uh, our coaching staff at half. You know, making those adjustments. Man, great job. So, Dayton, you you watched the first couple of games. You saw. Uh, Dom kind of do his thing. You know that you guys have some. You've got Demarion who had another breakout game the other night, and you've seen Isaiah. What did you learn from watching them that you've been able to take onto the field with you since you got back? Uh, I learned that with our team, they're big on like they see who the key players they that we got, and so the defense uh, harp on like our key players, and so then me coming back in. Um, like games I missed or like they haven't seen me really and so like it's uh, open space and room for me to make plays and just go from there. You're not going to be a secret anymore. <laughs> no. You, you, the cat's out of the bag on that deal. Yeah, they know it's, now. But I want to go back to you Andrew. How much your offensive coaches, how much is it kind of let them loosen things up a little bit more to have another guy out there to another chess piece to use man if you just look at our stat line like you look at Dayton had I don't know how many catches uh for so many yards and then Demarion has his touches uh Dom has his touches Campbell Stanick has his touches A-Rod has his touches like there's so many weapons that we're getting the ball to like it's tough to defend and once we get going man it's really tough well, we're going to talk about what you guys have done the last couple of weeks offensively especially and how you're going to need that because you go up to Amarillo Thursday night, take on the Sandys at 7 p.m. at Dick Bivens Stadium on 96.9 The Bull. Every game basically in district for most teams is almost an elimination or let's keep playing type thing. So, And that includes the Sandys this week against you guys. We'll come back and talk more about Coronado Amarillo High after the break on – 100.7 the score. This is the high school fan zone, the Mustang fan zone. I'm Randy Rosetta. We'll be back after the break. Bringing you the latest news from Coronado Athletics. This is the Mustang fan zone podcast from 100.7 the score. Welcome back into the Mustang fan zone on 100.7 the score. I am Randy Rosetta. That is Andrew Roy to my far left and Dayton Cheek in the middle. I'm going to read off the stats since Coach was mentioned talking about them just the other night. And what's cool to me is it Campbell had the huge game the week before mm-hmm. well, they obviously they focused on him he only got one catch yeah. he, he got their attention so Dayton steps up and he has a big game Dom just has a big game every week it seems like yeah I, coaches heard me talk about this Dom is a man you know a, it, you look at physically Dom is just a, a man <laughs> he gets off the bus and they, I'm guessing he turns heads yeah and you, you can't do much with him Demarion had Teams had bottled him up a little bit for a couple of weeks. He was probably eager to to eat a little bit. He got his 112 is the stats I got. Does that sound about right? Yeah, something like that. Three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That's that's a key number right there. Yeah. Biggest number is how many points you have, and when you've got one guy getting in the end zone three times, that helps. Yeah. You got to get in the end zone. Yes, sir, I know <laughs> that. I was yes, looking sir, at your stats. That. It's like he's putting up these great numbers. There's that one zero right there. No, yeah. Yes, sir. Is that a, a, a goal? Oh, yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. I'm quick. working on it. And then Isaiah has just been steady, steady. Didn't have 395 yards this week, but I'm going to guess that you're okay with that because of Demarion doing a little bit more and the yeah. way you guys move the ball anyway. I just thought that, you know, the way we equalized it, like everyone's getting touches. <clears throat> we finally started uh, allowing Isaiah to run the ball, so we had two rushing touchdowns really? okay. as well. Um but Dayton, like, how many yards do you have, Dayton? Uh, and a hundred, hundred yards, right? Even. Right at a hundred, I think. And like, they were yards that help, like us get into the end zone. He hadn't gotten to the end zone, but um, man, it's coming, and he knows that, and it's he's not worried about that. 
Uh, Dane's one of those guys that's going to go out like what we saw on Saturday. We're watching film Saturday, and we're in the office, and he's blocking, and he's helping, and, man, that's what we like. Like, he's out there doing what he's supposed to do to help everybody else get into the end zone. Uh, so he knows that his his time is going to come. So I was a tight end, Dayton. I'll give you a little pull back the curtain a little bit. Make sure you get a good block for Isaiah once when he's running. He'll remember that. He'll, he'll, throw <laughs> some, he'll, he'll, find he'll show you, you some, some love. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about the defense shutting them down. It was I mean, You didn't give up a point in the second half. And if, if the numbers that George had, George Watson, the guy that covered me for our website, my website, hubcitypreps.com, uh, you limited them to 313 yards. Now, in high school, 313 yards is not a whole lot. Yeah. The way offenses are going now, I'm curious, and I didn't see George's breakdown, how many of that was in the second half. Because if you're not scoring, you're not moving the ball very much either. Yeah, it was about 75% of that was in the first half. And, you know, some of that was, you know, on us. And some of that was on, on their coaching staff. They did a great job coming out with a great game plan and, and hitting us in the mouth early. And uh, we responded. You know, we came out second half and we responded the way we were supposed to. And that second half team is the Coronado team that you're supposed to see each and every week. And you got to win at home. Yes. Uh, I heard Kurt mention that, that maybe at halftime you went in and told guys that you did maybe had some special voodoo to make them think they were on the <laughs> road or something because you guys have played better on the road at times. Yeah, no, we just went in and challenged each and every one of them. Uh, they knew how to respond and, and, and what it felt like. And they didn't like the feeling at halftime, and, and they just responded like young men. Well, and there's going to require some more response this week because I mentioned you go to Amarillo High, Thursday night at Dick Biven Stadium, 7 p.m. kickoff, 96.9 the bull. These Sandys are – I think they, they dipped a little bit last year. They they weren't a typical Amarillo High team. I don't know if this year's a typical Amarillo High team because they score a ton of points. They're 42 points or more in every game this season. That was against Paladuro. I'm curious if there were some – I saw Paladuro last week. I could see where if you get behind against them, that's yeah. they've got enough athletes to kind of keep you out, out of – Kilter. They've lost one district game to Abilene High, which you guys got to see up close and personal. They, Abilene, those Eagles are pretty good. Yeah, but they came, they beat Monterey and then they beat Caprock fifty six to three to three on October eleventh, going into their bye week. So they've they've got some offensive guys. We're going to talk a little bit more about that real quick. Uh, Coronado at Amarillo High Thursday night seven p.m. ninety six point nine. The Bull. We'll run through the the rest of the radio schedule uh, in between segments when we come back. I want to get uh, Andrew to talk about what you guys have to do defensively in particular against I'm going to figure you guys will do some things offensively against them, but what you've got to do defensively against the Sandys when we come back on the Mustang Fan Zone on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the latest news from Coronado Athletics. This is the Mustang Fan Zone Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Welcome back to the final segment of the Mustang Fan Zone on 100.7 The Score. I'm Randy Rosetta. I'm here with Coronado football coach Andrew Roy and senior receiver Dayton Cheek. I'm going to, I'm going to, I posted these stats today. I want to find you real quick because I want to, you've caught my attention with what you've done in four games, 16 catches, 204 yards, 12.8 per catch. So you're, you've added a nice little element to this offense. You said you were a former quarterback. Oh, yes, sir. When did you switch over to become uh, a receiver? Uh, I switched over, I uh, believe, my sophomore year. At, my at sophomore. Coronado or were you? It was actually actually the beginning of my junior year at okay. Coronado. When okay. I transferred to Coronado, uh, they had actually moved me to running back, and I was playing running back for a while. And then I uh, like dropped a lot of weight, and so then they moved me to receiver, and then that's where I've been since. And plus, they had that Finch guy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, he, he's yes, a hard sir. one to knock off of, the, off mm-hmm. of his spot. What do you like about being a receiver? I, I was actually a quarterback before they moved me to tight end. Everybody likes playing quarterback. Mm-hmm. Coach probably wanted to be a quarterback when he played. <laughs> uh, to be to be a receiver, I just like I don't know. I like it's the, something fun about like just catching the ball. Like I, I'm the type of guy like I could sit there and just go out there and play catch. And so it's just catching the ball and running routes. 
And then sometimes here and there I like running. So like, yeah, so stuff like that really, just catching the ball and then being able to be mobile. I feel like as a receiver, you're able to be mobile and be like, you could do different things. Like a QB and a running back, you really have to sit in the pocket and yep. sit where you're, and then at receiver, I'm really all over the field and get to do different things to help out my team and to help win and stuff. You're still going to get hit as a receiver, but when oh, you're yes, a quarterback, sir. you know you're going to get hit, oh, yes. <laughs> hit a lot. So you you got to give that part of your job up. I don't. I'm not saying that you don't mind getting hit, but I'm going to guess that it's okay with you to not get hit every play. Oh yes, most definitely. Because <laughs> Isaiah, the one thing I think that people don't notice about Isaiah because he's such a smooth athlete and does something is he's also tough as a boot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. Yes. You know, Dayton is too, and and you know he started out. Uh, when we first got him back, he was, you know, playing both ways. And so he was playing defense. And so he was going delivering some hits as well. So he, he doesn't mind getting tackled and, and, and running across the middle. What he plays uh, for us, our slot, uh, he's going across the middle a lot. He's running that shallow route. And so he knows at any time he can be hit, but he doesn't, he doesn't mind delivering it as well. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yes, sir. And it's going to take some hitting because Amarillo High's got some guys who can play football, especially offensive football. I'm looking at their stats. Their quarterback is Jet Lopez. He he wasn't around last year, was he? They've they've had some pretty decent quarterbacks. Yeah, he's a younger guy. I think he was a backup on varsity last year, but uh, he's a big guy. He's he's been spinning it, man. He's been getting it to his receivers, and uh, he's got a lot of numbers. He's right under 300 yards a game. He's thrown for 16 touchdowns. And then they have a, a back with 673 yards, Jude Donovan. So they're they're multiple. They've yeah, got some things they, they can are. do. So let's go back to what I mentioned to you. Defensively, what do you guys have to be ready to do and what do you have to do to build on what you did in that second half? Uh, just understanding, like, you know, last week against Caprock, we have uh, two corners out. Our starting corners were out. Starting uh, D tackles out, Rod Hume. So – we're playing with some backups, but just understanding everybody that's playing, understanding their role, understanding what they're supposed to be doing, and understanding where they're supposed to be at at the right time, and just executing. Man, I think we'll be we'll be just fine if we just get lined up and and do what we're supposed to do. The fact that you have some backups or some guys who are getting more experience than they maybe were expecting to or did before. Looking at that goose egg in the second half, how much can that be a jolt of confidence for him? Man, real big. You know, we had a lot of players that don't get a lot of playing time that came in and stepped up, and uh, they understand uh, what it's like on Friday nights. And, and that was a big-time game, you know, especially going down at half to come out and uh, understand how you're supposed to react and, and go out and just get a dub. Like, they came out and did what they were supposed to do. Whenever a young guy who hasn't gotten a chance to play much gets out there much, I always I call it the Forrest Gump moment. Yeah, it's probably may not. <laughs> Dave may not know what I'm talking about. When Forrest Gump, when he ran, kept running, and his <laughs> his braces fell off. That look yeah. on his face. That's young guys are like, hey, I can do this. I can be a good varsity football player. Sometimes they have to see it and feel it to know what it's like. And you kind of see that, like with uh, we call him Tay Tay Trey Anthony Thompson. <laughs> he got the the ceiling interception. And that's yep. what, like, when you say that, that's exactly what I saw. Like, he got that interception, and you feel those braces <laughs> fall off. Like, now he understands, okay, this is what it's supposed to be. And now Coronado understands what it took to win a district game. They got a big one, 34-29 to against Caprock that keeps them in the hunt for the playoffs. That was your first one, but you got to get the first one before you can start talking about numbers two and three. So they that's get that it. first one, came back from 22 to nothing to get it. They go to Amarillo, 7 p.m. Thursday night, Dick Bivens Stadium. We'll be back after the break with the Matador Fan Zone. 